All right, here we are. Another day, another episode around the trash fire here. Your host, Matthias, along with the boy. John. Well, John, it's like we took another break. Yes. It's okay. It's it's fun to chat once in a while. True. It's just, you know, I feel like the, uh, the news hasn't been coming out as fast. Maybe because, yeah. you know, they're going with the whole AOS coming out. Yeah. So. And that's not something I'm too hype about, but you know, something I would like to dabble in a bit. Mm-hmm. But not really piquing my interest too much. So, you know, since that's what GW is mainly focusing on with their news releases, it's been hard to, uh, to meet up and talk about something for extended period of time there. Yeah, I feel you. So, but... There is a lot of stuff to talk about because you know it's been like a month since we met last met. Mm-hmm. So I mean, we got video games. We've got, I think, for the first time ever, we got X Wing news. Yeah, probably well, the last X Wing news we'll ever hear. True on this channel as well. Yeah. Um, a bunch of loads of models. So let's jump into it, shall we? So, I don't really remember when this was, but uh, the Skull, Skull event happened. It was just GW's uh, game, preview games. And uh, we got a lot of DLC announced. Mm -hmm. Not really too much in the new games. We did get Mechanicus 2, which kind of looks like the uh, original. From what I saw, so Mechanicus Two was good. It I think uh, graphically it could have been a little bit better, but in terms of gameplay, I mean it was fun. I enjoyed it. It was a uh, XCOM esque kind of game. The balance between energy and physical, depending on what kind of Necrons you were fighting. Uh, the big thing in this one is that you also get to play as the Necrons. That's pretty exciting. Actually. So you don't have to play as the Adept. Mechanicus. So, you haven't played a head playable Necron since Dawn of War, Dark Crusade. That's not true. There's Gladius. There's, oh yeah, Gladius exists. That there's right. Battle Sector, I think. You're right. I forgot about those games. So they... They've been playable, it's just, you know, you're only thinking of the good ones. That's coming out sometime. Uh, we got Talisman, which I, I don't know anything about, to be honest, so. That's coming. Space Marine 2, I'm just, I'm, honestly, I'm kind of just sick of trailer after trailer of Space Marine 2. I just want it to be out. Because I feel like we don't really get too much new things. I mean, this one showed off the PvP and all the skin stuff for your the Space Marine. Oh, yeah. But it, it confirmed uh, co uh, op mode that's not campaign, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that, they had that in the original. The wave no. after wave. Uh... Well, this one is different. It's, not, a, it's like a, not even a wave mode, it's a, it's a whole new thing. Ah. So I'm curious how that's gonna that's gonna pan out. Yeah, I can't wait for corn berserkers and ultramarines fighting fight side by side. It'll be great. Oh, that's not that's not happening. <laughs> That'll be, be. Oh, they got loyalist. the skins. Oh, don't worry. No, 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 no. They it is it is a loyalist only. Wait till they just wait. Just wait till you get the skin. They'll 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 see the money. That's how they're gonna make it. I think they'll do it last like last time where they have a, a chaos mode where you fight the space marines, the loyalists. Yeah, well, I mean, the the sad news, which I do, you know, which I really hated to hear, you know, is that Space Marine Two is going to have a season pass because that's that's what I needed in my life, another game that has a season oh, I, pass. I think it's it's I think it's all cosmetics. Yeah. I know yeah. it's all cosmetics. 
Yeah. It's not going to be like any pay fine. to win or anything like that. At least not that I know of. But, man. Another season pass game. I'm so sick of season passes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... It just infects, like, every game. And I hate it. Yeah, it's kind of everywhere with multiplayer games. I mean, I understand. It brings the new content. Keeps the game afloat, but that grind. There's only so many grinds I can do. <laughs> so there we go. We got Space Marine. I guess I missed this one. Space Marine VR. Defenders of Avarox. Uh, I don't think any of the VR games have been good, so... At least none that have been... Uh talked about by the people that I usually watch, so no high hopes for this one, but cool nonetheless. I get your gamer chair, get your Ultramar gamer chair. Can't believe they're selling that, but you know, they got it. Someone will buy it. You got your yeah, probably... Go ahead. Oh, it's probably gonna sell out. Warhammer is uh well, yeah, the People scalpers like that, are going to buy it out first, and then they're going to oversell it to the the whales that are going to who are going to want to have it. Just like with these Xbox controllers, uh, ultramarine color, I guess. So that's going to come out as well. Bolt gun. Um, I'm happy for this. This yeah. is getting DLC. Deals. Uh, that is exciting. Uh, I look forward to playing this again. Got new weapons, new enemies. It's gonna be great. Forward to it. And uh, by the time this video releases, it should be out. It's June eighteenth. So that is tomorrow when we're recording this video. So I'll definitely be buying that. Same. And probably streaming that again. So that's coming out. Rogue Trader is getting its DLC. I haven't finished Rogue Trader because it's a it's a long game. It's a long game. It's a good game, but it's a long game. I've I've been doing this one on stream, and every time I get to uh, chip combat, I swear to God, I hate the Jukari so much. <laughs> They are such cheating bastards. I mean, granted, my ship is like not up to par. Like I, I struggle against like just normal human fleets, but when I go against the Jukari, it's a good uh like fifteen resets before I give up <laughs> and just load a previous save and avoid it at all costs. But uh, yeah, this one they're getting their own trailer. I bought. I bought the, what is it called? Season pass, not the season pass. I guess it is the season pass. Where you basically get all the DLC for X amount mm -hmm. for this year or something like that. So I will have this. Hopefully I will be able to get to this in time. But we'll see about that. Total War 3. Karnak is coming as a free hero to download so you're not you don't have to pay twelve dollars for him and like two other units like they've been doing <laughs> with recent DLCs. So I'm I'm excited, but I'm a little burnout on uh, Total War. So it'll probably be a while before I go back jumping into that. But free content is free content, so we're getting that. Dark Tide is getting its update as well. We'll be finally going somewhere different. We get to go fight some uh, Dark Mechanicum. Or at least their forges. So, I'm looking forward to that because I like Dark Tide. I think Dark Tide is pretty fun. I'm excited for that update. Uh, Vermintide, getting some quality of life. It's still getting updates. Uh, it's amazing how long this game has been lasting. 
And I, yeah, know, good for Vermintide fans. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm glad. See, this is why I trust Fat Shark. Even though with Dark Tide, you know, they, they started off rough. You know? They don't abandon the game. They do make it better. And, I mean, no better example than Vermintide 2. Where they, they just keep adding more and more things. So, we're happy for that. Blood Bowl. I don't really care for Blood Bowl. Tabletop or video game. So I heard Blood Bowl 3 was pretty disastrous in terms of, in terms of his DLC cosmetic yeah, situation. Yeah, also heard that. Where you had to spend, I don't know, how much for each player and not your team. So I'm sure they fixed it by now, given the outrage. But Blood Bowl's getting DLC. Warhammer Tactics, I think, is the, is the mobile game, right? I think that's, yeah. Yeah. That's getting some new stuff. I don't really care, to be honest. I'm going to lie. Speed Freaks is a free-to-play game, which I didn't realize was going to be a free-to-play game. Oof. Right now, it is has a demo going out, a playable demo, till, uh... Oh, well, never mind. That demo's done. <laughs> I see it is May 30th. So, if you got to play, congratulations. Uh, I did not play it. I don't really have too much interest in it, but that was out there. Uh, Warp Forge, that's the card game, and same with the Horse Heresy Legions. I don't really care. I've got too many card games in my life. Don't need another one. That's coming. The World of Tanks collaboration as well, which already passed. That's how, that's how long it's been. So that's all the steam, that's all the, not steam, that's all the video game news right there. So pretty exciting stuff. It's the, it's, it's the best thing about Warhammer. It has, as so many comments I've seen, it has the potential to tap into so many genres. Just because of what it is. Yeah, and I think we're in a time too where Warhammer video games are, are pretty good. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them are, are pretty good. You got Dark Tide, Vermintide, Total War, Rogue Trader, Bolt Gun. You know, those are games that are already out and are, are pretty fun. And even Battle Sector and the Hex based one. Gladius. As Gladius are, are positively met by people Gladius, who like Warhammer and those genres. So During this event, Gladius was free to pick up. So if you did not, pick, did not get the chance to pick it up, you missed out a little bit. But it's okay, because last time they did it, they had Space Spring for free, and I didn't pick that up. So I kind of regret that, even though I have it for PlayStation 3. But... Yeah. So. Well, that is that. That's in terms of the video game news. Uh, Meta Watch. I know you don't really care too much for the Meta Watch here for 40k. Uh, I just want to quickly go over a few highlights that they talked about here. Uh, first of all, they're going to be updating the missions, so that's good, you know, updating the map deployment, they have it a little more, I think they said understandable, I guess, I guess measurements were not clear, so they have it a little more clear on where you're supposed to measure, diagonal deployment, sounds like it's not going to be a thing anymore. Because of uh, how many people were complaining about it. Uh, objectives. They're going to make battle line. Uh, what's the word? What's the word I want to use? Important, I guess. There's going to be certain things where battle line will be able to do. Uh, or no, they'll get more buffs depending on the mission. So they're, they're trying to incentivize running more battle line units instead of, you know, as it is, you could run zero battle line. So they're going to be buffing some uh, battle line units there. Uh, they're 
fixing a few things in terms of actions uh, as of right now all right before it was you were able to like run a move run and then do an action you can no longer do that you have to just you have to do a normal movement and then you can do an action uh zero cp units can no longer do actions that's that's pretty big that uh definitely nerfs the uh spore mine tyranids because they would always do you know deploy teleport homers and it would just shoot a spore mine into your deployment zone and there you go that one little bomb every turn just dropping a dropping a teleport homer in your back line scoring you max amount of points so that's that's no longer going to be a thing and uh, i'm trying to think of anything else that uh, uh yeah that's pretty much it a lot of the things like running assault uh running doing an action and being able to like shoot your assault weapons you can't do that anymore i guess that was a thing Honestly, I did not know that was a thing. Or being able to shoot your pistols and do an action, that that won't be a thing. Obviously, if you're a Titan or Knight, you'll be able to still shoot and do an action. So they uh they made sure that Knights and big units like that are still able to do something instead of having your 400 Knight 400 point Knight sit on an objective and do absolutely nothing. So they gave the they balanced them out a little bit there, but yeah, that is that. So looking at more new objectives, some tweaked objectives. Gambits, uh, no, yeah, gambits. They changed gambits up. It's now no longer a random card you draw. You actually get to look at your at your gambit and pick which one you want to do, and then making them. A little a little easier to do I mean obviously you know still gonna be hard to pull out and they kind of nerfed them a little bit on the point wise but if I like 10 points so that is also changing as well I've never I've, I've used the gambits somewhat but it was only like as a joke kind of deal because I I've never seen anyone, even when I went to the big tournament, I've never seen anyone use a Gambit card. So let's see if that changes in this uh, next shakeup. Other than that, uh, I can't think of anything else that they really mentioned. No point changes, no uh, no rule changes or anything. So. That is the 40k meta watch there. Then I think that is it. Yes. That is it in terms of just talking stuff for Warhammer. Now we can get into the model section. So, first we got our model of the month. We haven't mentioned it yet. And the coin. So we got the, uh, what is it? the Dark Oath Tribe. Like a little cultist here. Not cultist, uh Marauder, that's the word I'm looking for. Got the little Marauder here you can pick up for free. And in terms of coin, you got the slaves of darkness coin. No, oh, it's it's nice looking. You got the nice chaos helm and the little undivided uh sun there. That is what you can pick. We're already halfway through June, so now you gotta get your get your time to get those models if you want those models and coins. And then, because we haven't talked about it last week, we got Saturday preview. Which, trust me, Sunday's preview is not a lot. Saturday preview or uh, pre-order, sorry, is a uh, 30k. It's basically a lot of the 30k we talked about in the past. Yes, so man squads. However, the command crew is only available at the Games Workshop store. So if you want the just the sprue, that's GW only, online only. 
oh, but the, only. Okay. the regular command squad will be available in LGS's. Really? Why, I think it makes uh... sense because you don't really see sprues being like upgrade sprues being sold. Oh, upgrade sprues. Okay. Yeah. yeah, the full squad will be available in GW stores, but the upgrades for is online only. Okay, okay, I understand now. I get it now. So we got the command squad. Got the the Mark VI command squad. Some Legion command upgrades sprues. That's what you're talking about. We got Hebu Khan, the badass uh, white scar. We got good old little Horus, Aximon. Huh, so that's what he looks like, huh? I don't think we've talked about this one. This must have been one of the Maybe. models on our hiatus. Maybe. It's, it's a super cool model. I am not the biggest fan of the shield. I think it's cool and unique, at least because Tybalt Mar doesn't have one, and Horus Aximon will kind of just look like Tybalt Mar with the big sword, but. I don't recall him having a sword much in the novels, so I guess it's kind of there. That said, I don't hate it. It just did not expect him to have a shield. But otherwise, I, I like the model. I like that he has a model. He's a pretty important character for the Sons of Horus. He's part of the Mornival. He he kills Torgadon in the opening trilogy. Yeah, don't remind me of that. Yeah. I'm a boy Torgadon. Yeah. So, uh, glad that he has a model. There we go. Him. We got uh, Shadrach. Medusan, also an important character in the novels. Mm -hmm. Got him. Got Tybalt Mar. Not as important of a character, but still in the novels. I see, I see what you're saying about Little Horus and Tybalt there. Yeah, it's just Sons of Horus, Praetor with Sword, you know. So. <laughs> I mean, if I had my way, I would give Tybalt Mar the shield and Aximand not having a shield, but it's okay. It doesn't break the immersion for me or anything. Just a preference thing. That, we got Legions, Imperialis. So these are cool because you have these 1,500-point army boxes. So if you pick up the core box in this, you kind of have a full army. And they're pretty cheap too, and well, cheaper on compared to other things. They're like one hundred eighty dollars for fifteen hundred points. One hundred eighty dollars. That's still pretty steep, in my opinion. I mean, I know you're getting a full army here, but oof, so yeah, tiny. Well, not even for for elite, for li. That's half an army. I mean, in in Warhammer terms, it's on the cheaper end, but. Compared to Star Wars Legion, where you can get a full army for what, like one hundred twenty dollars for the battle forces? Yeah, it's uh, it is pricey. It's it's a steep asking point there. We got that. We got the Predator Squadron. We got the Solar Auxiliary uh, Battle Group. Have you played this game yet? No. You've not played this game yet. Okay. Nope. Everyone I know who. Who would play it? Played it plays old world. <laughs> I was gonna say, are these are the solar auxiliary? Are they just as bad as they are in thirty k? I actually have heard that they're stronger than space marines in this game, which makes me not like the game because I think. So what one thing Horus Heresy the game does really well is space marines are the best faction, like straight up. A space marine army will demolish a. Solar Ox or Militia or Mechanicum army without even trying. Even most Kasodi's armies will get smashed by Space Marines. There are some Kasodi's builds that are pretty unstoppable, but like the average Kasodi, if you have a balanced Kasodi's army, it'll probably lose to a balanced Space Marine army. Same for Demons. Demons will, unless they're bringing like triple Lords of War or whatever, or sovereign or double H, super HQs and a Lord of War, the Demons will probably have a hard time winning. So I really like that about. Epic because in the lore, space marines kind of beat everyone. Sorry about about horse heresy. In horse heresy, space marines beat everyone just like in the lore. Whereas in in ally, solar ox have a they're, okay. They're not significantly better, but they're slightly better than space marines, which is just weird to me. It's always the 
the difficulty of balancing the game, right? I mean, just make it like 30k, make Space Marines OP. That's okay. It's not a competitive game anyway. Solar Ox are, are terrible in, in 30k, but they're still cool when people play them. Solar Ox there. There, I got their Lehman Rusk, Strike Squadron. Returning Miniatures. Got some Knights. Flyers. And some old buildings there. I'm not familiar with the buildings. Are that was that from like uh, Titanicus? I believe so. Yes. Yeah. I figured it was. Black Library. We got Echoes of Eternity soft cover. The map, the map that they always keep trying to sell us. Uh, some digital uh, short books. French. Translation, German, and that is it. No, oh yeah, no, Saturday. So that's all up for pre order now. Big 30k haul. Because for this, for next week, we have the AOS launch box and we got a plushie. Tommy. So. That is pretty much. Oh, I did. Okay. Did I roll? Did I load up the wrong one? Might have loaded up the wrong one. Hold up. Do, 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 do. I don't know. I guess that is the right one. Was it not the. It's... Yeah, the pre previous week is just the the um the Griff found, right? No. I thought it was the two week pre order of the the starter set. For No. Not yet. Fourth. That's pre order is next week and released July. So pre order is the twenty ninth. Well, for okay, for this Sunday preview it was just the plushie. And some yep. and some banner magnets. I think what threw me off was is the next article, which is the Given Tide awesome rewards for pre ordering the uh uh new starter set here. So looks like you just get a nice little little note notebook to write some stuff in. Some I guess you could use it as objective markers if you really wanted to. The Skaven and the Sigmarine tokens. Got some coins as well. And then obviously the big the big uh box set that they're gonna be releasing. And then there we go, June twenty ninth. So yeah, I just misread misread it. But that is what is your pre-order bonus if you wanted to do this. I know they did it for 10th edition, 40k. I mean, the rewards weren't too much. It was like a mat that you could get or this really awkward like measurement thing where you like punch out the cardboard and it's supposed to like be like the line of your deployment zone and stuff. It was really bad. It was a really bad reward, I would say. So, I'd I remember say... getting a dice tray. That was pretty cool, but that was the only cool one. So there was a dice tray. I got the I got the the deployment board. You know the oh, got it. You know the one that comes in like beginner. Yeah, uh, starter boxes. That's what I got. I can't I believe that was last year. My friend got the the, the the punch out deployment thing, and that was just like. That was a ripoff. <laughs> <laughs> so, definitely better rewards than what 40k got, even if you're not going to use the book or the coins or the objective markers. They're at least, at least a little bit better. Next up, we got the Night Lords Command Squad. I'll leave this in your hands. 
This is this oh, is it, it's just the showing the potential of converting the models using the new command sprue kit. So here they got the command sprue kit and the assault squad box, which you can make into a night lords. Well, into a legion commands jump hack command squad, which in my opinion is my favorite command squad. I have one of those for my word bearers. It it kicks a lot of butt because they're they hold objectives. They have a two up save. They have high weapon skill. They can they can jump. Well, as a regular command squad, you kind of need a land raider or a rhino to get them anywhere, or planes or mortalis. And in that case, in a regular game, might as well just get a Terminator Command Squad. So yeah, it's just showing the kind of highlights the 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 classic customizability of 30k kits where you can mix and match them. So yeah, it's it's a cool way of showing what you can do with a new kit or the new sprue. I mean, there you go. And there's also the Sanguinary Guard, a little little mission pack here. Yes, so we get. 30k rules for Sanguinary Guard, finally. Been asking for this since 1.0. People have just been using the Command Squad to portray Sanguinary Guard, which I think in 2nd Edition is actually pretty good, because like I was saying earlier, Command Squads are really good in 2nd Edition, 30k. But here we have the Sanguinary Guard, which you, you could actually give them a banner so they become line units and can hold objectives. So they're functionally a Command Squad. But the big difference between a Sanguinary Guard Squad and a Command Squad with similar, with with jump packs is that they get access to in carmine weapons, which are essentially power weapons with brutal two in for bloody which are bloody does only. So they're expensive, but they hit like a truck. Whatever you're charging will probably die, even if they're terminators. Because you have brutal two. Just watch out for the clap back. Brutal. Funny thing though with this article is they show you how to convert Sanguinary Guard using the command squad upgrade and the assault squad kit and painting them gold conveniently ignoring that there is already a command squad kit that sorry a sanguinary guard kit that they sell kind of just this this weird new gw thing where they separate 30k and 40k kits as much as they can and aos and old world kits oh you know they gotta keep it first born can't be can't be converting those primaris in there. Well, primaris sanguinary guard are don't exist. The forty K kit is firstborn. Oh yeah, you're right. So But it's, it's more really interesting. Angelic, isn't it? Like they have wings and stuff. Yeah, which they do in they which they do in the lore. Like I'm listening I just finished uh End of the Death Part Two and they make a big deal how the Sanguinary Guard have wings. Oh. So and they have death masks in 30k too, according to the novels. So and the artwork. So it's kind of weird that they they're having you use the technically less accurate version by converting. The budget it's definitely the budget saying you wear guard. Yeah, exactly. All right. So after that, uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about this: the Index Emperor's Children. So. Uh, in the Chaos book, there was notice that Emperor's Children units were not inside the Chaos Codex. So this is, everyone is thinking that Olgrim will probably be coming in 10th edition. I don't think he will, but this is uh, this is the Emperor's Children's hoping they're going to get their own Legion book finally. It'll be the last of the main Chaos God forces. I guess it would be the right word to put it. So, here's the hoping. We don't really need to go over it or anything, but... Yep. But Ember's Children, own index. Maybe they will finally get their own book here. Moving on from that, uh, a bunch of all the models that have been releasing is what we're going to be looking into next here. So, surprisingly, Lord of the Rings got one. We got a new character, new orc uh, captain. I'm kind of surprised. I didn't think. I mean, I know every like blue moon they'll release something for Lord of the Rings, but I was kind of surprised to see that they're releasing something right now. Yeah, that they gotta keep the license somehow. So, oh, you know they can. 
continue making everything plastic, that'd be, that'd be nice. I would like some more plastic stuff. But yes, Lord of the Rings, getting a new one, new character here, or captain. Scavenging around. Good to see that happening. We got Age of Sigmar. We got a new Skaven Abomination thing here. Uh, I mean, it's it's grotesque. You could probably use it as a grotesque, honestly, with how uh, awful it's looking. I'm just saying, these new Skaven models that are coming out, though, oh, man, I cannot wait for the conversions of grotesque. Mm. They're going to be happening oh, for yeah. Drukari. Oh, yeah. It's just a shame right now grotesque are pretty trash, but... Nonetheless, it's going to be great. So, this abomination is, well, I mean, it is what it is. It's an abomination. A very good looking abomination. Agreed. We also got uh, this guy here, Mr. Angel Wings, Tyrael. So this is a, actually a, a re-sculpt of an older model. Oh, and if you remember the, the storm cast with the arrow and the wings? Yes. That's this is the new version of that. So it's hinted that a lot of the models that they were squatting are actually getting resculpted. I mean it makes sense. Yeah. Yes, this this is a beautiful looking model. I don't like Sigma Reigns, but you know this is a beautiful looking model. I will say that. Get that. Freaking tactical rock tail. And I always got tactical <laughs> rock. Uh, but that is that. And then we got some Black Library released a new model with uh, their Dawnbreaker uh, book here. We got this beautiful model. This is uh, this looks really good. Her sister's her sister model here. The cherubs, flame sword, which I assume is important in the story. I've never read any of the Dawnbringers, so I don't really know. And then, of course, in fashion, they have the helmet, helmetless version as well. And then, look at that detail. That's the shield, beautiful. The backpack. Ah, the gorgeous model. If I played sisters, I'd have this model. But I don't play sisters. So I'm not gonna really I'm not gonna spend the money to buy it. That's a very cool and beautiful looking model. Of course, that's what I expect from Black Library. Kinda like the Black Library is kinda like the forty K uh war bands kind of deal, you know. Everything everything needs to look perfect. So once again, Black Library and GW, of course, because they make the models. Knocking it out of the park with this this sculpt here. And then last but not least, for our new model Monday, we got Necromunda. And we got uh, more uh, Tyranid Gene Stealer cult nonsense that's happening right now. And uh, yeah, that's a, that's a model. Definitely something new. Like a uh, what's the thing called? Like a half big zone throat. Yeah, which is cool because it's kind of you know tyrannid like. Yeah. This is great. It's creepy as hell. I like it. I want one. I hope it's plastic. Oh yeah, I mean second Munda, so it's probably a resin, but I'm right with there with you. I hope it's plastic because this is. Uh... Thick ass looking model. Yeah, I really want to get this new box set for Necro. I'm pretty excited to, to work on it. That is that. Uh, so, that is all the Warhammer news, unless I missed something. Any Warhammer news you wanted to pull out? I think that's kind of it. All right, then. Well, as mentioned earlier, earlier in the podcast here, we were going to talk X Wing. 
go. X-Wing has made a statement on their uh, website here. And Game. Armada. And Armada. And long story short, it's dead. Yes, X-Wing and Armada are... Se so Atomic Minus Games is seizing development and production for X-Wing and Armada. No, because isn't just like Imperial Assault or some other games where, or people say Titanicus, where they're not making new stuff for the game anymore. They're just selling rules for it and printing models. So I think Titanicus kind of stealth. It's not dead because they they still make, they're still making the models. But, and the rules are still, you know, they're still making the rules, even though they're not supporting the game. Whereas for X-Wing and Armada, they're not all, only are they not making any more anything new for the game, they're going to eventually stop making the models for the game. So if you want X-Wing and Armada models, you better buy them now because they're going to stop making them forever as far as, we're, as far as we know. It's a shame to see. Yeah, that's... I mean, I think mismanagement is the most common, I think that the most fair reason why this happened, just looking at what happened to X-Wing and Armada, you know, they, they, so long story short, Asmodee, which is a, a gaming, pump, I guess, producer is in the, in the video game term, not a, not a developer, you know, they, they own company, they own developers, they acquired FFG and told FFG to that they're only going to be making board games. No more RPGs, which all moved to Edge Studio, and all their minis games moved to Atomic Mass games. Atomic Mass games at the time was where the guys making Marvel Crisis Protocol. So now they got Marvel Crisis Protocol, Star Wars Legion, Shatterpoint, which they, they were developing when this all happened, the next wing on Armada. So... You know, going from making two games to making five games is, is a big that that's the that's a big strain on your resources if you're a video game developer. And Atomic Mass decided, I think, wisely to focus on Legion. And it, I mean, it sucks for Armada and and X Wing fans, but the games weren't in a good state to begin with during acquisition. Maybe Armada Armada had some potential with Clone Wars coming out. X Wing was kind of already slowing down its development. I think Critical Mass was hit when 2.0 dropped in First Order and, and New Republic got some ships. Clone Wars was getting stuff too. But I think the majority of Star Wars ships already had rules, so it was kind of hard to to see where the game would go in terms of making new stuff. So X Wing was already in a kind of tight spot before the acquisition. And you know, post acquisition, Atomic Bash just didn't put the resources in a in X Wing on Armada. So, yeah, X Wing was, you know, for a time the second best selling war game in the world, just trailing behind 40k. And now it's it's just dead. I mean, War Machine. Actually, there's another piece of news we're gonna talk about later about War Machine, but you know, War Machine is still kicking. X Wing is is gone. Right, and I I can't remember a game that was squatted this hard. As in, it's, it, you're you're done. Or so, uh, sorry, let me rephrase that. X Wing is probably the biggest game that was just completely squatted. Fantasy is another is also a game that was squatted, but I think a difference with Fantasy was that Games Workshop still sold Fantasy models for Age of Sigmar. I mean, eventually. Well, no, because now fantasy is coming back with Old World, but even when fantasy uh, ended, they were still selling fantasy models for Age of Sigmar. But with X Wing, there's no follow up. There's no X Wing Age of Sigmar. Like it's just gone. And it's it's interesting to see a a titan of a game go from again the second big best selling war game to to dead. Yeah, I remember back in 7th edition where uh, 40k was not in a good spot. You know, the management was bad. Like, they didn't listen to the fans. They didn't give us any updates on anything. It was always speculation. I remember X-Wing 
Uh, when I was this is back when I worked at you know Game Over. Uh, they actually took a lot of our forty K players because you know it was just it was fast. You need a lot of models. It was a lot cheaper. You need to build or paint the models. Exactly. You just you just open a box and you played the game. Yep. And it was a lot simpler. So a lot of people were moving into that, and I mean because of GW's practices, I mean there was a lot of games that were gaining a lot of traction. War Machine and Hordes was yeah, growing a lot. Um, oh god, what's that game called? Kings? Kings of War? Kings of War was gaining traction after the death of uh, uh, Old World Warhammer. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of games gaining a lot of traction back in that era. I mean, uh, when the 8th edition hit, and GW, I guess, went under new management, and they started doing the Warhammer community and everything, you know, GW started finally getting back on track. I mean, GW was always, Warhammer was always going to be big, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, and, and never dipped first place. But you know, there was a lot more. There was a lot more options out there. A lot of, depending on who you ask, you know, a lot of better options and a lot of cheaper options than Warhammer at that time. Because seventh edition, in my opinion, was just definitely not beginner friendly. In my opinion. No, you. I I would agree there. So. And I remember, my good friend him his name but you know he was like the top at our at our local warhammer tournaments and then when he got into x-wing i mean he basically just abandoned warhammer and he a lot of he won a lot of tournaments in x-wing because he was he was that good he was good at warhammer and then he was really good at x-wing so uh, just to see the games go down. I mean, I don't... Armada, I can't really speak too much upon because, honestly, I never saw anyone ever play Armada. I know it was just basically like the 40k version of uh, X-Wing because it's a lot more ships, a lot bigger ships and everything like that kind of deal. But I, I know X-Wing was a lot, a lot. Even my old game group that I used to hang out with all played X Wing. So I always my only fear with any of the Star Wars product is that it will just die at like a drop of a hat. Because there's only so much of the well you can tap into. I know with this new Disney Star Wars they keep inventing stuff so they have stuff to pull from. Just like the, you know, what are those stormtroopers called? The the the, the riot stormtroopers. The riot stormtroopers and the rangers from the train. Or the whatever. yeah, the range troopers. Yeah. Like, you know, that's all stuff they can pull from those those movies and shows, but there's only so much you can do, especially with the ships. Yeah, especially with how much ships they already had with X Wing, and that's the thing with Legion. And you know, I, I jokingly complain that Legion barely releases anything, but it's it's a pretty good rate of releasing stuff. Because one, you know, your meta is is less fluctuating, like in 40k, where the meta switches every like you know, 30 minutes. Whereas in in Legion, it's more stable, and also you're not digging like Legion isn't at the point where it's scraping the barrel. I think there's a lot of content it could cover, but it's helped by the fact that you get 10 releases a year. Or ten to fifteen releases a year, so you're not just releasing units and then you're out of units to to release, right? Right. But because you make a good point, eventually you will run out of stuff. Yeah, then when you run out of stuff, you're just making rules, and then by the time that you stop making money, because all you do is making rules, you know, you you get the axe. <laughs> And that's uh, unfortunately what's happened with Star Wars Legion and Armada here. And it's the thing, you know, if if there was a company, if AMG 
focus on X-Wing. Could they make it work? Probably. But Legion is a more attractive, I think, place to go because X-Wing is already knee-deep in releases and X-Wing is, you know, has been around for longer, right? Like, where do you go from there, like I was saying? Well, you can't go anywhere with X-Wing at the moment. Yeah. Just because, so, like I said, you're you're just limited. You're limited on the ships that you are you can put in your game. I mean, I don't know how much creative freedom they get, but I don't think they have any like custom ships that they've made up, right? No, every. I mean, everything is from everything has to be approved by LucasArts, so you can't really make things. Yeah. So if uh, Disney over there isn't making enough new ships to be put into the game, it's uh, it's hard to hard to keep afloat. Hard to keep uh, your customers uh, biting at the bit for the next new ship to come out. Why I'd say Legion works out just fine. I mean, you're right. Waiting, uh, you know, two to three months for a new model to come out sucks. But you know, rather be drip feed than uh, than uh, being thirsty all the time. Right. But. Yeah. That's, uh, that's the uh, Armada X Wing situation there. Yeah. And and it's interesting because X Wing and Armada, Armada more so too, fulfills a niche that isn't really filled right now in the wider gaming world. I mean, I'm sure there like fleet games exist where you're, we have capital ships and stuff, but you don't really see them anywhere. Armada. You know, has that niche of a game with big capital ships, and you know there are other dogfighting games out there like AI, which I don't even think they're making new stuff for anymore anyway. That you know, speaking of this, but there's AI. There's Aeronauta, an AI. I mean, Aeronautica Imperialist. There's also Attack Wing for Star Trek. I mean, those games exist, but X Wing was the biggest one, and you know Armada especially dying and not having that. So I'm surprised that niche isn't exploited more. Don't Even if I TW about the Gothic, but don't you worry, BFG is coming next year. Oh yeah, that is uh, that is the hype. I want my vengeful spirit model. Battlefleet Gothic for those who don't know, BFG coming out next year. Mark yes. my words. Yes, please. <laughs> all right, uh, that's all the articles that I had. So I have one more. I posted a picture. I'll yeah. talk about it. Yeah, go ahead and talk about why I opened it up. So, War Machine is no longer being made by Privateer Press. Really? War Machine has been acquired by Steamforge Games, the makers of Blood Bo- of Blood Bowl of Guild Ball, which was the Blood Bowl replacement when Blood Bowl was was squatted for several years. Oh, I and... have a lot of Steamforge games. Well, by a lot, I mean uh, the Resident Evil games. Board games there we go. Made. Yeah. I did that. I so, did that whole Kickstarter for. I don't remember which Resident no. Evil. Probably two or one. Yes, yeah, so they have acquired Steamforge Games, and or sorry, the uh, Steamforge Games has acquired the War Machine, the Iron Kingdom's IP, and the the game's not getting a new edition. The game will Mark Forrest will continue. However, big announcement is they will be releasing a two-player starter set in hard screw plastic before the year's end, which I think is the most exciting piece of news because warm I mean, for people who know me, I love plastic kits. I'm a you know, a side note, Fallout Waste and Warfare just released uh, an Enclave power armor and Brotherhood power armor plastic kit, which is you know I'm excited about because I love plastic kits. So yeah, they're gonna release a new starter set for our machine with plastic kits. And it is telling that the first in the very first article about this acquisition, the picture they posted, which is what Matt is showing, is a picture of fully painted models because War Machine, for the longest time, didn't do that. When they release something new, here's a 3D render of the model. Sometimes they paint it, sometimes they won't. So having an actual picture of the model that's painted, I think hypes people up. I'm, I'm kind of hyped about it. I will probably pick up this box set just because you know War Machine was is a really good game. It's a great IP. Me and I played it before. I it's a really good game. So 
yeah, having this kind of plastic set would be kind of a fun project for me. And they also announced that they're going to move new kits may also be in hard plastic. They're still going to keep the 3D printed thing, which, you know, has mixed reactions among community. But yeah, hard plastic kit kits would, would be great because War Machine's biggest problem is there's it's there's no good entry way to War Machine Mark IV right now. If you want to get War Machine Mark IV, you got to drop three hundred dollars or something, or two hundred or three hundred dollars for a full army. Ooh, and boy. yeah, you're you're getting a full army, but still, that's that's a huge price. And imagine if you get a two thousand point army for two hundred dollars. That's a steal, right? But that's still two hundred dollars for a new person. If there's no other smaller way of, of entering the game, and I think Steamforge has said that they're going to look into starter sets or battle group boxes and all that to help new players get into the game which i think is very important i think games workshop for all their faults have nailed the get new people into this thing strategy with their starter sets with their stores with all these articles on how to and all that i mean vanguard which i'm i'm hyped about for us 4.0 that's a, a a way of getting new people in right so I think War Machine getting this now with Steamforge is a step in the right direction. Yeah, but I do remember when's... a long time ago when we like were just getting drip fed a little bit of information of the of uh, what did you say, Mark IV? Yeah, I remember they're like they were just gonna release two big boxes of just like Dignar and uh, Kador. Yeah. And now the new Legion, the new Trolls, and Cricks are getting those boxes. Or they have had them already or are getting those boxes. Which, again, that's cool that you have this giant box. But yeah, if box. you're a new person, that's that's a huge ask to drop that much money for, for this game. True. I do remember, now that it's coming back to me, I do remember we did complain about it. Or at least I did. I don't remember I was complaining how you too. felt about it. It was, it was a crazy way to start. Yeah, we were like... I remember complaining about how you don't have a two-player starter set. Yeah, yeah. You gotta... How I got into War Machine is I bought a two-player starter set. Yep. I split the I split the cost with a friend. Yep, sorely missed. And, Very uh, sorely missed. That's how I got... That's how I started my Kato army. So... Two-player box set, it's the best way. It's always... The best way. It's always yeah. It's always any game. If you have a two-player box, or you have an express like BattleTech has a two-player box, right? It's amazing. Heresy technically has one, not really, but it's possible. But you having a box that where two-player can can play, because you're kind of good to go. Oh, there's that, and you know, even if you don't have someone else to play with, you know, you get to experiment with the armies that you want to try out. Yeah. As well, so it's still it's still a good option. So uh I'm glad that they're finally getting their two player box set. Should have been there from the start. Should but at least we got it. At least we're getting it. But yeah, man, two giants of the wargaming world that almost challenged seriously challenged Games Workshop. One got destroyed and the other was acquired by someone else. Well, to be fair, like, I mean, when they privateer press here, when they uh, squatted their world, I think it hurt them a lot. You know, because you you said like all the factions were pretty much. Well, I mean, they're still legal, but. In terms of tournament play, it was only back in the day. I don't know if they've added more people. It was just like Signar, that new faction that was really an old faction, Kador, and one other faction that I can't remember. Yeah, I, I, yeah. There's a game mode which is only new stuff and curated old stuff, not all the new, all not all the old stuff. Which yeah, that that is a. Uh, you're invalidating people's stuff. End of the day. Yeah. So I mean they. They shot themselves. I mean, like, I understand what they're doing. You know, they're right. 
the the armies are a bit bloated, so you need to cut some uh, chaff there. But when you invalidate like armies, you know that that makes people mad. Like mm -hmm. uh, AOS uh, one point oh, where you had like Tomb Kings gutted, Bretonians gutted, Dark Elves gutted. Like all these old armies that everyone had, and it's like, hey, you get to use the indexes, but I don't expect any updates or anything. Right. Past this point, so. That's, that's why a lot of people left in droves and didn't even bother to give AOS a chance, which, you know, I didn't give AOS a chance until 2.0, but that was for other, other reasons. It wasn't, I mean, they squatted my army, but I just didn't like the rules. And with War Machine, with how many factions are in that game, that's that, that's a lot. That's a lot of uh, angry players, diverse players you got there. So how many factions are there? Right now? In War Machine and Hordes. Before? Oh, there was like dozens. Yeah. And then you... Get squad all that. I mean, granted, you know they they could still play it, but in terms of tournament play, you know you're only limited to like four factions. Again, they probably updated it now, but I'm only going I'm going by my old news that I heard from the very start, and that's just cool. So hopefully, with Team Team Forge uh, acquiring. The Iron Kingdom's uh, IP. Hope it in the right direction, and then hopefully the player base can grow uh, once again. Because uh, I liked War Machine. It was just a shame that uh, kind of just outright died. It's just like one day, it's like it's dead. No one plays the game anymore. It's pretty tough, too, because a lot of local game stores aren't willing to stock War Machine because Privateer Press kind of burned them with their stock issues and, and shady practices with, you know, online discounts, exclusive online discounts and stuff, so. Oh. We'll just have to wait and see. End of the year, right? You play your box set? Uh, before the end of the year, yep. Before the end of the year. All right. We'll see if uh, Steam Forge Games can keep that promise. But uh, I'm, I'm a lot of Tarkin points. You got anything else? That will be it. All right, then. I say we go to, go to our hobby rants, then. Let's start with you, John. What have you been up to? What are you doing? Working on some Horus Heresy. My Sons of Horus. I added some droid units for my Legion droids because I'm trying to play droids this kind of season-ish for, for Star Wars. Are you so all these Grievous? new Clone Empire units. What's up? Are you running Grievous? No, no. I'm running just all like triple commando droids and a, a splash of, of battle droids and super battle droids. No, uh, no bug people? You know, no bug people. Notions? No G-Notions, because I, I need six boxes of them. Come on, you can get six boxes of them. No, I'm, I'm okay. I'm All right. Okay. So you're going to go, you're, you're leaving the good guys to play some evil droids this season? Yes, I think that's the plan. All right. I see how it is. No, though, that makes you, that makes you a traitor. It's okay. I'll I'll, I'll be back to Empire once the new edition drops. I'll have to put you down. <laughs> when I get my uh my range troopers. Your range troopers. I don't know, man. Actually, uh, speaking of high brands, I played a game against triple range troopers, and uh, I did defeat them with my droids. So. Are triple range troopers supposed to be very scary? Yeah, because it's triple range four units. Mm -hmm. Cross the map. Which. So I had to just hardcore play the objective. If I did a gunfight, maybe I would have won because commando droids do hit hard, but 
I think with in that game in particular, I think just playing the objective really helped help me out. Well, it's just like every game, it's all about playing the objective. Yes. Unless the objective is, is about true. killing. This is true. Cool. How about you? Else? What have you been up to? Me? Well, I've been busy with work. I've been busy playing a lot of the the video games. Nice. Because uh, you know, I lost I lost my drive to just paint, and I'm just like, you know what? I'm gonna play my backlog, my huge ass backlog of games that I have. I don't feel too bad about buying them. I've been doing that, and then uh, just recently, about like two days ago, I started getting back into my painting. Nice. Uh, groove again. So. Right in front of me, I have some finished painted as a brimstone models. I'm trying to differentiate it each week. So now that this week is over, I'll be moving on to um, 40k models to paint, and then Legion, and then you know, repeat the cycle. That's that's the plan. We'll see if I can keep that keep that going, but. Yeah, I just recently getting back into the painting, so that's nice. Of course, tomorrow is going to ruin my plans because I'm going to be definitely playing that new bolt gun DLC. So, you know, everyone come, come watch me, come watch me play and fail and die multiple times. It'll be a, <laughs> it'll be a good time. Actually, I mean, I played that on the hardest difficulty. That was that's pretty easy to be honest. And uh, you know, I don't do too good on high difficulty. So the fact that I mm -hmm. beat it on the highest difficulty without too much problem shows that anyone can beat that game on highest difficulty. That's how easy the game is. There you go. Glowing recommendation for me. Uh there's that. Uh gonna probably play some forty K this week. It's funny, now that I don't do the tournament scene, it's been, like, kind of hard for me to keep up with the 40k stuff. Like, I just... I just don't care. <laughs> yeah. I kind of just... Yeah. I kind of just do my own... drive in my own lane kind of deal. Right, right. I wonder if 40k is just releasing too much stuff. Maybe not. I don't know. I mean, even when we were super into it, they were still releasing things quickly. But maybe the novelty of of remaking new things, like we you know, right now forty k, like what's going to be exciting? I guess Emperor's Children, because right now the releases are just here's a new unit or two, mostly a new character. Well, I mean, products, right. Right now, there's some interesting lore bits that are happening right now in the Pariah Nexus. So there's there's a lot of things going on in there. I mean, the only thing that grabbed my attention was Thousand Sons. So they're apparently making some automatons to help them navigate through the uh, Pariah Nexus because it's supposed to be like a null zone for all psychers kind of deal because it's all blackstone and stuff. So rumors are, you know, every Warhammer YouTuber that I watch pretty much is like, Thousand Sons are going to be getting a new unit because of this one little uh, snippet from the this white dwarf that came out saying how <laughs> they're infusing their magic into these automatons to help them uh, go through the uh, Pariah Nexus. So it's sounding like uh, Thousand Sons might be getting a new unit. So I'm you know I'm excited for that because I've been asking for a new unit or at least an existing chaos unit to be added to thousand suns so they have a, just a little more variety i'm a, I'm a little excited for that but it's just like to be honest i haven't bought a new i haven't bought any dw stuff that wasn't paint in like a long time oh really yeah it's been a while i think i'm trying to remember the last thing i bought that was gw that wasn't paint and I think that was back 
LVL, so back in January. Huh. Yeah, last thing I got, probably the... these. It was some horse hair. That's a lie. I got the the Age of Sigmar, Cities of Sigmar dude on the horse, the HQ on the horse, because I needed it for the, the, the Vanguard. So that's the last thing I got. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But most, I mean, right now, for GW, it's really just 30k. Old World for a bit, you know, I was hyped for it. I have my Chaos Army, but the lack of releases is just, for that game, is just... Yeah, I mean, Dwarfs were announced, and they're not coming out until after 2.0, so at least, or uh, until after AOS 4.0 comes out, so at least a month from now before Dwarves come out. And then who knows what the next book is, right, for Old World. And, but yeah, right now, it's just, just Horse Heresy that's hyping me up in terms of WGW. Maybe, I think when Necro comes out, when the new stuff, I, I've repeatedly said that I'm excited for the box. I'll probably get that, but in terms of 40k, I got the Chaos Lord when he comes out. That's kind of it. Nothing yeah. really I mean, exciting for me. If rumors are true, there's going to be a bunch of new Elbar stuff that I'm going to be excited to buy. That's AKA good. AKA new Phoenix Lords. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be happy to buy that. But, yeah, in terms of 40k, like, and Age of Sigmar. I just I haven't bought anything because it's uh, one one I have too much, so I'm trying to paint all the crap that I have, all the shadows of brimstone, all the 40k AOS that I have, Star Wars Legion. Like it's embarrassing how much of a backlog I have that I could easily get done if I just sat down and took the time to do it. And it's just, you know, I don't need anything. I've been in 40k for so long that Eldar-wise, I have everything. Dark Eldar-wise, I mean, there's like a few units I don't have, but I don't need. Mm -hmm. And Thousand Suns, I mean, my Thousand Suns are done because I took them to the LVO. Uh, basically, have barely touched them since. So, it's just nothing to get, because I already have everything. The only thing I could buy, really, would be new things. Is my Eldar by themselves, which I think I fought you. It might have been someone else. Didn't I do like a 3,000, 4,000 point a game against you with my Eldar? I don't remember. I haven't played 40k10. No, well, like this, was, this was back back in the day. Like, oh. Me, Maybe. 2018, maybe. 2019. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, that that's how many points of Eldar that I have. Is like, I've got 4,000 points worth of Eldar. That was back in 9th edition. So, probably a little bit more now. Because I have added a little bit to it since. But, yeah, it's just nothing, nothing that I want to buy. Because so, I don't, I don't need any new armies. I've got almost, I've got at least half the armies out there for 40k, and I only play with like two or three at most. So, mm. yeah, the other half of those armies I are just sitting in their boxes, not being touched. If you like my Tau, my orcs. Uh, there's another one I have somewhere that I can't remember. Demons, all, all not being touched. I don't, I don't, I don't want to play with them. I stick with right. what, I, what I like, what I know. They were fun hobbies, but. I think of any other rumors that are going on right now. Nothing else that I can think of. But yeah. That that's what I've heard story wise as progressing that the Pariah Nexus, the Bastor storyline that's going on. So Hopefully Thousand Sons will get something new. That will be cool. 
and hobby wise yeah that that's it just painting just painting just trying to get my painting done and see what happens nice nice i know i'm just jumping around here but uh also the real the reason why i'm not following competitive 40k is just because since i don't do tournaments anymore my game group is just very casual mm -hmm. so there's no point in doing like a super hardcore competitive list because there's no value out of it in my opinion right if, right, my, right. if my opponent is going to be fluffy which he majority majority of the time is it's like i'm going to bring a hardcore list against a fluffy list like we all know what's going to happen there gonna be a gonna be a slaughter for one side but yeah yeah that's my hobby and we're gonna go i'll have my full crew on wednesday it'll be nice to see the boys hang out play some warhammer play some shadows maybe on a, we haven't really decided on what we're gonna do yet but doing it Anything else you want to rant about? Uh, no, I, I think that is it. Oh, I've been working on some Shatterpoint, too. That game is so addicting when you're just, like, painting a squad and it's done, and you're like, oh, gosh, like, I feel accomplished. So. Yeah. I want to be at a point where I have, like, a full army, and I just paint small things, but it never happens because I keep starting new armies. Mostly for Horse Heresy. Yeah, but, I mean, majority of the time, you finish it. That's true. That's true. You're a uh, you're a lot faster painter than me. <laughs> I get distracted so easily. It's like I did like a painting stream like on Friday or something. Mm -hmm. I'm just painting like six model five. How many models is here? Six models, and I just like more like three hours. <laughs> I just only finish like four models. It's okay. Like, God damn it. But I mean, you you got the techniques down. I'm just like, it's my one little dry brush. I'm like, okay, here we go. I'm just gonna keep painting it like this. I think the biggest thing is just consistency. Like I've been doing, even now, I've been doing that where I just like I paint like ten minutes a day. That's just maybe maybe that's just base coating five shoulder pads for you know out of a squad of ten, right? But you know, after a week, that's it's a lot of progress. And because even now I've been I've been busy doing other stuff too, with like like hanging with friends or just playing games. So because you know, I also play Magic, right? And I try to play that game once a week just because it's it's pretty fun. And trying to think in painting time, you know, it's it's been hard to paint paint like a fit like a full like ten one hour session kind of thing. So I just pretend to just small things like painting again like painting 10 15 minutes a day and then just accumulating the progress from that yeah i try to implement my rule of painting a model a day kind of day. i see because i would like to do what you do and just like you know and a shoulder pad a day kind of the deal like or you know 10 shoulder pads a day but uh -huh. then it's just like my consistency it just never matches like Paint wise, it always oh, the model always fair. looks different than uh, the first person that I did it on kind of deal. So that's fair. Try to do it all at once, right? Or right. try to finish it at once, and so I can get the consistency down a little bit. But right, totally get that. Well, all right. I think we've been uh, rambling on a little bit too long, but. I'd like to thank everyone who made it to the end here. And uh, see you next time. Hopefully not in another month, but a little sooner. Later, everyone.